Hello, YouTube family, and Happy New Year. I'm Patty Jackson. I'm your auntie of pop culture. It's time for the curls and scoop, and I know, auntie is way early. Let's just say, I couldn't wait to greet you with Happy New Year. Like we do always, we start with a hug, so come on. As I move my hair out the way, you see the radio station um, that I work at. On Sunday night, we play oldies. It's kind of like paying homage to the greats who paved the way from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Great music, so we're coming to you from here. What a way to end the year and start the year. And unfortunately, there were a lot of deaths. Let's start. Barbara Walters. The groundbreaking journalist passed away at the age of 93. This was a woman who burst open that glass ceiling, whether it was coming on the Today Show, doing the ABC Nightly News with that guy. What was his name? Was it Harry Reid? No, he was so damn mean to her. Um, doing 2020. In 1997, starting The View changed the scape of television. She thought it would only last like two seasons. It wound up lasting over 25 years. The interviews, and she interviewed the top newsmakers, whether they were politicians, whether they were celebrity stars. Barbara Walters had those interviews groundbreaking indeed. She hasn't been seen in public for the past six years. I believe she was battling Alzheimer's and you know, like most people, they don't want to they don't want to be seen in that state and whoever is caring for them will really keep them out of the public eye. Towards her latter years on The View, a lot of people kind of noticed, you know, her, you know, a little different. I guess she never thought that Whoopi Goldberg would wind up really like taking over the show and had seen a myriad of hosts. The tributes are pouring in for Barbara Walters, an interesting career, and just a woman who probably was not afraid to say no. She really did change the landscape of television and really opened the doors for many women to walk in behind her. On one of the farewell shows that the uh, View had, they had Oprah Winfrey on. And it was so gracious for, for Oprah to do this send-off where they brought all the female journalists. It was an amazing moment in TV. But I always felt that Barbara was just a little bit jealous of Oprah Winfrey because at that time, Oprah was bigger than life. And... It was like, well, who's going to be the next Oprah? Because this is how people think. They never think of being the next them. It's always, who's going to be the next Oprah? And when Barbara Walters, if you remember when she gave Iyanla Van Sant that chance, they wanted Iyanla to be the next Oprah. Well, there's only one Oprah. And there's definitely only one Iyanla Van Sant. When Barbara took Iyanla, she didn't know what to expect. And that experiment, I don't think it lasted six months. But it came between Oprah and Iyanla. And Iyanla subsequently did not have nice things to say about Barbara Walters. But, oh, I just, I remember that time. They were trying to make Iyanla something that she was not. And it was a horrible experiment. And maybe it taught them, stop trying to find a, the next Oprah and just let Oprah be Oprah. But Barbara Walters opened the door for so many women and she did it in a time when she wasn't really treated nice and it was all because she was a woman. I think that guy's name was Harry Reese and he was so damn mean to her in the 70s. And it was like, really? But you got to commend to Barbara Walters for opening those doors and busting that glass ceiling. Uh, the interviews done like no other. But may she rest in peace. We also lost Pope Benedict. Uh, I think he was the first German priest, uh, the first priest in 600 years to, re you know, resign because he was sick. He was old when they had him as the Pope. He was 95 years old, but he passed away. You know, they say they always comes in threes. I say they always come in nines. Then you had a needle pointer from the Pointer Sisters. She died at the age of 74. 
Anita Pointer had just retired just a few years ago from the Pointer Sisters. She went through her own battle with cancer and many, many losses. Anita Pointer was preceded in death by her mother, her daughter, and sisters Bonnie and June. June, Bonnie, Anita, and Ruth made up the Pointer Sisters. And in the 70s, they had the songs and the 80s. Slow hand, fire. Bet you got a chick on the side. Yes, we can. I'm so excited. <clears throat> Jump for your love. Neutron dance. Automatic. An incredible career. But towards the end, Anita really couldn't keep up and she had to retire. But she had a lot of tragedy. But that group, the Pointer Sisters, had some hits. I mean, just an amazing impact on music. The Pointer Sisters is going on because the only surviving member of the sisters is Ruth Pointer. She's 76, and she and her daughter that she had by Dennis Edwards, who used to be with The Temptations, they're, her and her daughter, they are the new Pointer Sisters as we see them. But rest in peace, Anita Pointer sang lead on most of the songs. I'm so excited. Bet you got to stick on the side. Yes, you can. That was a needle pointer. It passed away at the age of 74. In the rap world, Gangsta Boo was found dead from 3-6 Mafia. They're still, you know, trying to determine what happened. But the young woman, young, I think she's like in her early 40s, she was found dead in her home. So a lot of deaths, like going into the new year. You know, they always say that the new year ends and it's like there's people dying, but then you wake up and they just continue to go on. But rest in peace to all of them. Actor Lakeith Stanfield, a lot of people know him from the movie Atlanta, Get Out, The First Knives Out. He is a great actor. I always thought that he was a little quirky. Um, last man uh, alive in San, the last man in San Francisco. He's a great actor, and he's usually very, very private about his private life. Well, he decided to go public with a woman that he met five months ago, and beautiful woman. He says he's in love. They're engaged. They're going to be married. But he forgot to tell his baby mama that he was planning on doing all that, and the baby mama who just had this baby, she just had this baby put him on blast on social media saying, hold it, wait a minute, we got a baby over here? I just had your baby and you just met somebody five months ago and you're going to marry her? It was embarrassing. And I know Lakeith was like, I never go public. He decided to and it blew up in his face. So how was New Year's Eve on CNN? Well, Andy Cohen, Anderson Cooper, they were not drunk. I think they were drinking pickle juice, but they abided by CNN's rules because CNN said no more drinking. Don Lemon was stationed in New Orleans, and boy, did that party seem like a lot of fun. Don wasn't drunk, but he was really into, they played uh, juveniles, back that ass up. He was so into the song, he missed the countdown cue for New Orleans to say Happy New Year. Now, they were saying that it was so much noise. He was right there by Manny Fresh that he couldn't hear nothing. And he had the two mics in his hand, but he totally missed the countdown. And some of the comments were, well, when Don was drunk, he never missed the countdown. But the CNN show prevailed on. R. Kelly's Lifetime, Jay are squeezing everything they can. Surviving R. Kelly, the final chapters airing today and Tuesday on Lifetime. Prince Harry and Meghan, you thought you heard a lot of them in 2023? Mm -mm. That book that Harry is putting out called Spare is coming out. Now this is what's interesting about this book. Prince Harry is going to talk about playing second fiddle to his older brother, William, who will be the King of England one day. Now, in the book, he trashes his brother, but he's kind of nice to his dad, King Charles. And he doesn't talk about Camilla. They said they told Harry, don't be up here talking about Camilla, because Camilla is the reason that your parents broke up. She was the side chick, and they, they tormented Diana. Well, Harry ain't going to talk about none of that. 
but his brother, he trashes. And their relationship probably will not get any better after this. Now they're saying that Megan wants to write a book. They're going to have to stop being a one-trick pony. I'm sorry. I know people going to get mad when I say that. They got to stop being a one-trick pony. I don't want to hear a book from her. I'm tired of them complaining about what they went through. Let's move forward and let's do some things. You got a lot of money, $100 million from Netflix to save the world. Let's do something else. But they said that she wants to write a book. Dion Warwick's documentary. Now, I have not seen it yet because I work on Sunday night, but I taped it. So it is something I'm going to talk about on Tuesday. I'm going to watch it on later on sometime on Monday. But if you missed it and you're saying, how can I watch Dion Warwick and Don't Make Me Over? HBO Max is going to be streaming there. So if you missed it, HBO Max, it's a look at her life told in her words, told in Aunt Dion's words. But it looks good. Everyone from Snoop to Smokey Robinson, Elton John, they're all featured in this documentary. Don't make me over. Dion Warwick, HBO Max. It's been an open relationship for two years. He even had a baby on her. But Diddy has now gone public that young Miami, Carisha, for the City Girls, is his official girlfriend. I hope he's, I hope he's good to her. I do. Because, you know, they say he's not kind to these women that he'd be out here with. But even though he just had a baby and that, that, that. They said he's going Instagram official. They say things are not official until it goes Instagram official, but it's Instagram official. Angela Bassett had quite a weekend with her son. He's a teenager Slater, and he decided to prank his parents. Angela Bassett, Courtney B. Vance. There is a horrible prank trend that's going on where... You're bum rushed and you're told that someone famous has died. My son tried this with me and I don't, I, I just didn't believe him because he, he was trying to scare me. And I was like, I always had this look. I'd be like, and he was like, you're no fun. I can never get you. And he said, mom, it's a prank. And I was like, well, it's not funny. And he's like, well, it's a, it's a prank and the kids are doing it. I said, I need you to stop being a follower and being a leader. Well, Angela Bassett's son, Slater, tried to prank her, saying that Michael B. Jordan was dead. Well, it set Angela into a tizzy. And, you know, because you hear bad news and, you you know, your heart, and your stomach, and you just get crazy. And then he realized that he needed to tell his mom that he was only playing. This is a harmful prank. It's not funny. They're doing it for the views. He had to apologize. He had tears in his eyes. Can you imagine getting cussed out by Angela Bassett? Wait, can you imagine if Angela Bassett is your mother and you get the cross between Tina Turner and Queen Ramonda from Black Panther and just getting told off in that voice? He had tears in his eyes. He apologized to Michael B. Jordan, his family, the fans, for everybody. He said it was a terrible prank that he had no business participating in. He said the lesson has been learned. It's a terrible, terrible, terrible prank. And he had to learn a very hard lesson. So what was number one in the box office? Of course, it was Avatar, which they say is just, even, even though see, it costs so much money to make. Avatar is still on top, making billions, but it'll probably make break even because it cost billions to make. That came in number one, of course. The Whitney Houston movie, everyone's wondering how it's doing at the box office. It cost $45 million to make. It's so, so far, the total is $16 million. That's it. $16 million. This movie will be streaming soon. That Babylon movie with Margot Robbie and Brad Pitt, we don't even want to talk about that $80 million disaster. Didn't even make $6 million at the box office. Big congrats to Summer Walker, the singer, has given birth to twins. Uh, this makes children number three for her. Erica Badu is on hand. Erica Badu helped her give birth. She's a doula. 
to her first kid and now the twins, mom, dad, everybody is doing fine. And some good news about Romeo and Master P. The father and son had been publicly feuding about family responsibility and what he should give his kids. And it was a mess played out in public. They have reconciled. And I guess they're going to try to keep the business to themselves. I think the family is under a lot of stress, particularly since the daughter died of like an overdose and it's been a lot of tension. And I think I asked the question, you know, when is enough when you're a parent with your kids, but Master P and Romeo, they're reconciled. Good to hear about that. I do want to talk about the best man final chapters um, next week. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. I do want to talk about it. Wait, I still got to finish it. I know what's taking me so damn long because I get home and, and life is just different with the cooking and cleaning and the kids, but I'm going to finish it. And I'm tell you later this week, I'm going to want to talk about the best man final chapters. You can tell me what you think and you don't have to worry about no spoilers because auntie is getting through it. Happy New Year, everybody. Subscribe to the channel. We are our goal this year. We're at 64 now is to get to 100,000. So subscribe to the channel, tell a friend, leave a comment, give us a thumbs up. Happy New Year. Let's start this new year off with good curls and good scoop. I'm Patty Jackson. Thanks for joining me. I am your auntie of pop culture.